Good afternoon. My name is Ayeye Matthias. This afternoon, we will be looking at the topic environmental audit process. Environmental audit process entails the procedures involved in carrying out environmental auditing. As a definition, environmental audit forms a key component of environmental management. The process is a series of systematic and documented steps. It follows the plan, do, check, and act steps. Environmental audits evaluates the performance and compliance of an organization with the prescribed environmental standards to assess the harm caused to the environment or a potential to cause environmental harm. An environmental audit also is a type of evaluation intended to identify environmental compliance and management system implementation gaps, along with related corrective actions. Now looking deep into the components of environmental audits, the basic components are the pre-audit, where you get to explain the need for the audit, what the audit entails and where the audit will be carried out, and who and how the audit is to be executed. The next component is the on-site audit. That is the actual audit where field visits, observations, questions, sampling, and analysis are carried out. After the next component after the on-site audit is the post-audit. This involves reporting feedback, implementation, and follow-up. Now let's take the components one after the other. Looking at the pre-audit. A pre-audit by definition is the first step in the process of an audit. During a pre-audit, a company or an organization's documents are examined to ensure that all information contained in the documents are correct before the company undergoes an official audit. Here, the various documents, working documents provided by the company will have to be looked into to have an understanding of the contents of the document. Now, the pre-audit helps us gather information on activities at the site. It also helps us understand the legal status of the facility, which includes permits, management structure, and scope of the organization. And it also helps us to understand the activities to be audited. Now, pre-audit helps us define the purpose of the audit. It also helps us understand and map the scope of the audit. Likewise, during the pre-audit, selection of audit team is done. And also, during this process, identifying facility staff to be interviewed and confirming the availability is also done. Now, the benefits of carrying out this pre-audit, which is more like a meeting with the management team of an organization, is that it helps to develop an audit plan for the on-site activities. Now, audit plan are issues like when, how, where, what, and who to be audited is looked at. Now, let's cast our mind back to our earlier definition where we said the entire audit process follows the plan, do, 
check and add steps. Now, this first we just discussed is the planning section of the steps. Now, this pre-audit also helps to make the necessary preparation and arrangements for the on-site audit. Now, selection and scheduling of facility to audit is containing here. Like we said earlier, selection of the audit team also comes in. Now, after the pre-site audit or the pre-audit, as it were, we move to the next part of the audit, which is the actual audit itself, and it's called the on-site audit. Now, on-site audit means an on-site examination of a company or an organization's record to verify information on which a permit is based and to determine compliance with the state uniform program requirements, give, in essence, the various requirements and laid out standards, rules, regulations that are meant to guide the operations of the organization are thoroughly examined. Now, the on-site audit comes in various steps. We have a couple of steps. We will be taking a few of them. The first step for carrying out an on-site audit is understanding the internal controls of such organization. Now, it is necessary to develop an understanding of the controls that are in place or are thought to be in place. Now, these understanding this internal control will include assessing formal procedures and practices, record keeping and monitoring, inspection and maintenance programs, now actual implementation. These are what are contained in the internal controls of an organization. Understanding these controls is very important for the on-site audit. Now here the audit team gathers information on the various controls as we've listed by observation, by interviewing staff and the use of detailed questionnaires. Now going to the second step of the on-site audit is assessing the strength and weaknesses of these internal controls we earlier spoke about. Now evaluating the strengths and weaknesses provides the rationale for conducting subsequent audit steps. Now, you, the auditor, will look for indicators such as clearly defined responsibilities contained in the audit internal controls, competence of personnel saddled with the responsibility of executing and managing these controls, appropriate documentation for these controls, and records and system of authorization of these controls. Now, it is more important to determine whether the system is effective than whether it is sophisticated. The sophisticated nature of a control doesn't give or doesn't show its effectiveness. Your aim of carrying out this audit is to ensure that the controls are effective, that the system is operating in an effective condition. The third step in this intern, um, uh, on site audit is gathering audit evidence. Now, the audit team attempts to verify that the steps and controls work as intended. The internal controls we have looked at ensuring that these controls actually work is this is what this third step is all about now these evidences can be collected through inquiries for example like we stated here asking the plant operator what he or she would do if there were a major chemical spill now, if these controls are in place and if they are properly documented and disseminated, 
the plant operator should have an understanding of what should be done if asked this question. Now, the second way of getting this evidence is by observation, that is, watching specific activities and operations in progress. As an auditor, once you are in a facility for auditing and you are at this point, observation is key. It's not every action that is seen that is questioned. Your observation is key so that you'll be able to have a first-hand information of what is obtainable and what is practiced at the site. And the third way with which we gather this evidence is by testing, that is, checking records to confirm compliance with regulations. Now, organizations might claim to be complying with set-down rules and regulations. Now, you as an auditor, ensuring that these are checked, records are kept, will help you understand and know if the organization is actually conforming with these regulations. Now, the fourth step in this on-site audit is recording audit findings. Now, all the information obtained as an auditor is recorded, usually on the audit protocol documents and work papers. Now, your observations, your findings are stated down. They are written. And in cases where you think you might need the audio recording, it is essential, especially when carrying out interviews on site, you have a recording of these um, discussions. Now, a comprehensive record of the audit and the state of the facility at the time of auditing is then produced. Now, it is important to note that when carrying out your audit, you have to be sincere. There is no bias. In this case, where deficiency is found, it is important to be that this is noted in the audit. And it is noted as an audit finding because it's imperative for us to ensure that audit is actually done to manage situations that are not in compliance with regulations. Once these records are taken. The next step is reporting your audit findings. In this case, there is what we call a verbal report, where usually a meeting is carried out with the management of the organization where this audit is carried out. Now, this meeting is done by the audit team and the management of the organization. In this, each findings and its significance is discussed with the management team and gray areas are highlighted to ensure there is an understanding between the audit team and the management of the organization. Now we have in here, prior to leaving the site, the audit team will often provide a written summary of findings for the management team to ensure that 
there are no surprises in the final report. This is done so as to ensure that the actual findings that were recorded at the site during this on-site visit or on-site audit is properly documented. Now, once the meeting has been done, the next step is the post audit. A quick recall is we had looked at the pre audit, we had looked at the on site audit, and now we are looking at the post audit. Following the on site work, the next step is to prepare a draft report. Now, this draft report shall contain the action plans to be implemented. And when we say action plans, what do we really mean? Action plans are steps, measures that have been suggested to the management team to help in correcting some of the findings, some of the anomalies that are not in compliance with the laid down regulations as contained in the document. Now, these action plans must be stated clearly against observations or findings that were noted during the on site audit. Now, the draft report is reviewed by the organization's management as submitted to them by the audit team. This is meant to confirm its accuracy. And once the accuracy is confirmed, this report is distributed according to the requirements of the organization to the senior management of the organization. This is also to ensure accuracy is duly reported. Now, a key content in the draft report is to develop an action plan to address the deficiencies, as we said. Now, some organizations ask for recommendation, and this recommendation we are looking at and talking about are these action plans. Now, the reason why some of them ask for these recommendations before the reports are submitted is for corrective action to be included in the final or formal audit report. Now, some of them will request for it so that they will look at it and kick off implementation of these recommendations immediately and ensure that what was duly stated is what will be contained in the report. Now, others require that the audit report states the facts and the deficiencies with no reference on how they should be corrected. Instead, the recommendations should be given them in an informal way. This is done because the responsibility of the management team is for them to devise a remedy of their own to curtail their shortcomings. Many a times, recommendations given might not be easily achievable. So it is imperative for the audit team in giving a recommendation to ensure that these recommendations are achievable and are realistic. This is to help organizations actually implement these recommendations as at when due. Now, once an audit program is in place, future audits will include past reports and progress in the implementation of the recommendations stated. 
Now, it's important as one part of the post audit is to ensure that stipulated timeline are fixed for audits, a repeat audit to be carried out. And in Nigeria, a three-year period is given for audits to be carried out. Now, a checklist for environmental audits. As stated earlier, we discussed that the entire environmental audit process goes through the plan, do, check, and act steps. Here, a checklist is important, and this is very important as to help us plan, because if we do not plan adequately, the other steps, the other phases in the steps will not be fully actualized. Now, the first phase of the, that uh, contained in this checklist is planning the audit. And when we say planning the audit, we mean you're deciding the area to be audited, as earlier discussed, the various processes to be audited, and the procedure that will be taken in carrying out this audit. Now, the second step in this checklist is preparing the checklist itself. Now, the procedures itself relating, applicable to the area to be audited is critically looked at. Now, here, the audit form is also designed. The third content in the checklist is obtaining and reviewing background documents, which is done in the pre-audit phase. The fourth content is conducting and documenting the audit, which is contained in the do section of the second step and also the on-site audit. Here, questions are asked, observations are made, record uh, replies are also given. Now, the fourth content, or the fifth content, rather, of this checklist is identify and summarize all non-conformances. And when we say non-conformances, non-conformances are basically activities or uh, steps that, that have been laid down that are not being complied with. For example, a laid down procedure for a quarry company, for example, is that all personnel on site must be with their personal protective equipment, popularly known as PPE. Now, not the, the non-usage of this PPE is termed non-conformance, or a situation where air mops are supposed to be used in a factory that generates a lot of sound, or a processing plant that generates a lot of sound and findings or observations shows that staff or personnel are not using the normal air muffs. And also, taking another example of a moving truck, it's expected that every truck in the facility, especially, should have a alarm system, especially when you want to um, reverse there should be an, um, a reverse alarm. Now, you're getting into a facility and seeing a truck reversing without the alarm. It shows a non-conformance because contained in the document of the company or the establishment or organization, it states that every vehicle in operation in such facility must have a reverse alarm. Now, that is what we call non-conformance. Now, the sixth content of this checklist is requesting corrective actions. Here, once you have been able to identify your findings or your non-conformances, you write down your suggestions. Then get agreement from the officers responsible. The seventh contained in this checklist is complete audit form. And you state a date for next audit. Now, it is imperative that this checklist is prepared 
and made handy for a complete or a proper audit process to be carried out. This will enable the auditors follow and ensure that every step contained in the process of this audit is executed and no step is left unattended to. An audit, an environmental audit as it were, it's a very important tool for every organization, every facility, every company or every organization in all spheres of operation because it helps, as we said earlier at the beginning, to help check the management's performance as against every established standards. Thank you for your participation.